In our third video on endocrinology, we'll look at the interaction between the hypothalamus and the pituitary. We'll look at the interaction between both the anterior and posterior pituitary. I'm going to ask a question at the end of the uh, talk, so please pause the video and try to answer it. This will increase your learning and understanding. The hypothalamus lies deep in the brain along the walls and floor of the third ventricle. The hypothalamus communicates closely with the body and with higher brain centers. After gathering information, the hypothalamus sends instructions to the pituitary, both the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary, shown here in the darker color, arises from glandular tissue that bubbles up from the developing oral cavity. The posterior pituitary, shown here in the lighter color, is actually a downward projection of brain tissue. The hypothalamus connects to the posterior pituitary using nerve tracts, so this is a neural connection. The hormones are made in the hypothalamus and stored in the posterior pituitary. A nerve signal from the hypothalamus triggers the release of these hormones. The hypothalamus connects to the anterior pituitary using a vascular connection. Chemical signals, hormones, are made in the hypothalamus and gathered in the capillary network. These signaling hormones drain into a blood vessel which then leads directly to another capillary network in the anterior pituitary. This configuration of one capillary network draining directly into another capillary network is called a portal system. It's a very efficient way to get a signal from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary. Let's take a look at how this might work for the anterior pituitary. The hypothalamus monitors the body conditions and senses the need for more thyroid hormone. It makes a hormone, TRH, thyroid releasing hormone, and dumps the hormone into the capillary network. The hormone is then carried to the capillary network in the pituitary. This triggers the release of TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, which then goes into the general circulation and is carried everywhere in the body. When the TSH gets to the thyroid gland, it signals for the creation and release of thyroid hormone, referred here as T3, T4. The thyroid hormone then circulates throughout the body and it decreases the formation of TRH and TSH, negative feedback. So you might consider that the hypothalamus and the pituitary are asking the thyroid gland to make T3, T4, and once the thyroid hormone, the T3, T4, is made, well, then the hypothalamus and the pituitary stop asking for it, and the levels of TRH and TSH decrease. Let's look at another example. The hypothalamus senses the need for cortisol. It makes a hormone, CRH, corticotropin releasing hormone, and dumps it into the capillary network. The CRH, or as shown here, CRF, corticotropin releasing factor, another name for this hormone, when it gets to the anterior pituitary, it triggers the release of ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone. The ACTH goes into the general circulation and is carried everywhere in the body. When it gets to the adrenal gland, it triggers the formation and release of cortisol. The cortisol hormone then circulates in the body and decreases the formation of CRH and ACTH. Again, negative feedback. You asked for cortisol, you got cortisol, and now you stop asking. Now, some hypothalamic releasing factors um, are actually inhibitory in nature. So, for example, prolactin inhibiting hormone is secreted to block the release of prolactin from the anterior pituitary. And as long as the hypothalamus is making prolactin inhibitory hormone, the anterior pituitary won't release prolactin. Now, if the hypothalamus senses the need for prolactin, it simply stops making prolactin inhibitory hormone, and once it does that, prolactin is released. 
One way to think about this is to imagine you're with your dog and the rabbit runs by. Your dog takes off, but you've got the dog on a lead. You're holding it back. You're inhibiting it from chasing the rabbit. If you let go of the lead, your dog is gone and begins to chase the rabbit. And that's how prolactin inhibitory hormone works. So we see that the hypothalamus controls the anterior pituitary by releasing hormones from one capillary network directly to another. These hormones either stimulate the release or block release of the pituitary hormones. As we go through the various endocrine glands, we'll look at the hypothalamic releasing factors and the pituitary hormones that drive secretion of the end organ. There's an excellent table from the OpenStax textbook that lists the interactions of the hypothalamus and the anterior and posterior uh, hormones. This link is provided in the show notes. Now the posterior pituitary is controlled by a neural link. The hormones are made in the hypothalamus. They travel along nerve axons and are stored in the posterior pituitary. When needed, the hypothalamus sends a nerve impulse that triggers their release. Antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin are released in this way, and we'll look at those two hormones in our next lecture. Let's check your understanding of negative feedback. Now Betty Sue heard that taking thyroid hormone might cause her to lose weight. She figured she could lose a few pounds, so she got some thyroid hormone medication from her grandmother's medicine chest and began taking thyroid hormone. What would you expect Betty Sue's TSH level to be once she starts taking her grandmother's thyroid hormone. And how much thyroid hormone do you think Betty Sue's thyroid is making now that she's taking this hormone from the medicine chest? Pause the lecture here and see if you can work through the answer. The way to think about the TSH problem is to consider asking your teenager to clean her room. If the room is already clean, you don't ask. So in this case, the thyroid hormone that Betty Sue is taking will act on the hypothalamus and the pituitary to suppress the release of TRH and TSH. So you would expect then her TSH levels to be low, and since she has little TSH, the thyroid will make very little thyroid hormone. Why? Well, you've already got T3, T4, you've already got thyroid hormone, why would you ask for more? In our next video, we'll look at the effects of antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin, two hormones made in the hypothalamus and released from the posterior pituitary. Thank you for your attention.